When parts are manufactured, it's imperative to be able to show that you meet the dimension or design requirements supplied by your customer. There's a myriad of ways to be able to do this. One of the simple ways is to take a machinist rule and make measurements. You can look at diameters, you can look at widths, you can look at various dimensions, thicknesses of walls on a part, but not highly accurate. So maybe we go towards using a piece of uh, measuring equipment or a gauge that would allow us to get more accurate measurements. This is called a caliper. It's a digital caliper and it's used to make measurements. So I could come here and make a measurement of the diameter of this hole and lead it off on the caliper. I could also measure wall thicknesses utilizing the caliper. I could also look at widths of a slot and read that off using the caliper. I also have a means in this cal caliper of measuring depth. So if I was to go into a hole here, I would be able to place this here and make a measurement of the depth of that hole. Another instrument I can use, which is more precise, is a micrometer. And the micrometer you're going to place the part that you're going to measure between the two pads of the anvil on the micrometer and make measurements also. Typically, this instrument is more precise, as I said, than the caliper. The caliper tends to be easier to use. Furthermore, you may use measuring equipment that's very well suited for the type of measurements you're making in order to make them more precise. Let's take a look over here at a height gauge. And let's look at this part, and let's say we wanted to measure the step height, one of these features. We bring that in, we bring the height gauge over to it, and let's say we want to measure this step height here in this feature. So we can bring the height gauge over to the top of the step, bring it down, make contact with it, and zero the gauge. Then we can move the part away a little bit, bring the height gauge up to it again, and go and bring it down to the bottom of the step. When we do that, we can read the height to 0.3925 inches. So you can see we can be very precise. So it's very important to choose the right measurement tool for the right job. We're going to start talking a little bit further about different measuring tools. Right now we're going to talk about CMMs, coordinate measurement machines. And with a coordinate measurement machine, it takes some of the human error out of the measurements and also makes it automated so that many, many parts can be measured. I'll show you another instrument now that does measurements like our height gauge did, but it's fully automated. Uh, the system here has a microprocessor in it, which gives us greater capability and it can do calculations. But let's do the same thing. Let's go over and let's measure a step height. So we move this over. We want to measure the step height from here to here. So we bring down the probe and let it touch the surface. Then we're going to zero it as far as the reading goes, bring it back to zero. And I'm going to move the, uh, the height gauge a little bit away from the specimen itself to get down to the second step. There's a bed of air beneath uh, the gauge which allows us to move this gauge around fairly effortlessly. Now we'll come down, we'll come up to the second step, we'll come down and make a measurement there. As we touch it, and we see we've got a measurement here of 0.39. 336. So with the manual height gauge, we're measuring to the nearest 10,000th of an inch. Here we're measuring to the nearest 100,000th of an inch. There are uh, a huge number of, of uh, capabilities that this machine can present to you as far as making measurements. And just for example, one is if you start making measurements on this entire block here, you can measure, for example, the distance between centers of holes. Let's take a moment to show you it's called an optical comparator, or others may call it a shadow graph. Here in this example, we have a bolt here. And let's say we want to measure the major diameter of the bolt. So what we do is we bring the crest of the threads up to the dotted line here on the optical comparator and press 0. We're only measuring on the x scale. All I have to do now is move the uh, bolt over to the opposite side. and take a reading. And we've got 0.3885405. That's a little 
bit of a vibration there and showing a little bit of flickering in the measurement in the 100,000th place. I want you to know is the way this works is it actually does make a shadow and this happens to be a magnification of 20 times. This is a coordinate measuring machine or known as CMM. It's a portable unit and it's manually operated. And what it's used for is to make measurements on parts. As you can see here, I can bring the probe, which is a Ruby probe, down into different features on this part and record that. Pick it up, put it in the center of this feature, and record that. This will automatically determine the distance between centers. What's happening here is, as you're looking at this, this is the wrist, and there's a movement associated with that. There's a movement associated with what's called the elbow and the shoulder. And the position of each one of those feeds data back to the system, which gives the measurements of the part. I'd like to introduce you a uh, second CMM technique for making measurements. This system here uses a charge couple device or CCD camera along with light. And with the light, we're able to look at specimens like this. As you can see, very, very fine detail needs to be measured and defined and measured. This type of instrument can do that where other CMM machines cannot. And why would you do something like this? Just assume you were making parts for medical industry. You needed very small, precise parts. This is the kind of equipment you'd use to analyze it. And essentially, in analyzing it, you're taking, making dimensional analysis on it and comparing it with the computer-aided design or the CAD drawing. So you put this part on the display table here, and this would make measurements using the light and the camera to capture data. As you can see over here, here's the software that's being used to do the analysis, and then you'd see a drawing. From the drawing itself, the CAD drawing and the information of the data taken from the part, a comparison can be made to see if you are within the tolerance limits on the drawing to satisfy your customer's requirements. The third CMM machine I'd like to present is a machine that you see here. It's a bridge CMM. And what's different about this is from what we've seen before is the fact that it's a combination of movement manually, and I will be doing that with my jog box. And also, once you let the machine or this computer know where the part is that you're trying to measure, it will automatically make measurements, and it can repeat these measurements time after time. So you see I can move this in, uh, in the direction. I can move it forward. I can also move it up and move it down. What you're looking at here is a probe, has a sapphire tip as the other um, Romer arm did. You bring this down and it touch off on various points on the part. Once that information is obtained, you can use that data to make comparisons with the uh, print or the CAD drawing to determine whether or not you're in specification. Now that we're able to show you the various metrology equipment that we have in the laboratory for making measurements and some of the CMM, the coordinate measurement machines, we'd like to get to another part of the course, a more formal part of the course, we're going to talk specifically about coordinate measurement machines.